Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back to today's Daf Yemi Be'yol Lamed Vav. We begin right on top of the Amid. The Mishnah taught us, Mashilin Peiroiz Derech Arua Biyamtav, which means you can drop down your supply of uh, grain, for instance, sitting on your rooftop, and you're expecting rain to arrive. To avoid spoilage, to avoid losing that crop, you can actually drop down the Peiroiz Derech Aruba through a, an opening, a skylight in that roof, to get it out of harm's way. So you can do this on Yom Tov, and actually we find a similar, a very similar halacha in Masech Shabbos. So you're expecting some guests, or you're expecting people to come learn. You need space for them, says the mission. You can clear out the storage room. Boxes of hay, of tvua, to make room for the um, arrivals. Now, we do find some limitations imposed in our halacha. In the case of Mashil and Peres on Yom Tov, and we do find some restrictions regarding clearing the room in Masechah Shabbos. The Gemara now will explore, will seek to compare, and see whether the halacha is pertaining to Yom Tov will apply to Shabbos, and vice versa as well, the limitations imposed on Shabbos will apply to Yom Tov. So let's start on top of the Amid. Hasam Tanan. In Masechah Shabbos we learn, you can clear out that room, but not the storage room. What does that mean? Shmuel, Shmuel explains. What does that mean? You can clear out the tvua in anticipation of the, uh, the, of the students coming to learn, the urchim. But don't clear out the entire storage room. Because by doing that, you're going to expose the floor and Dilma Asila Shvigumois. Then he might actually notice a pit, a guma, and flatten out his floor, which is a malacha. So clear out as needed, but not the entire area, so that you don't see a straight, clear floor, which might prompt him to come repair that floor. So that's a restriction imposed by Shabbos. Now the question follows, Hachamai. What about here on Yom Tif? When you're clearing the roof of Paris in anticipation of the oncoming rainstorm, how much can you do? Can you clear the entire roof? Even though you might expose the, uh, the roof. Apparently we're speaking about an earth roof. So, there's a chashash of ashvuyu gumois or not. Hachamai. What is the halacha regarding Yom Tov? Ha'asam hu. B'shabbos da'asam ashim da'chamer. Shall we say perhaps this restriction is limited to Shabbos because Shabbos is certainly more severe than Yom Tov. For his over and Allah on Shabbos, he gets skila kuris, which is definitely more chomer than Yom Tov, which only involves a love. Perhaps only on Shabbos we're machmer to prevent this type of situation. Of a Yom Tov, the kill a shaper dummy as opposed to Yom Tov, which is relatively light. We're not so machmer. And therefore, clear out the entire area, even though you're going to expose the open floor. Oidilma. Or perhaps, oh, somebody could be to be some medrash. I'm a sloy. If over there on Shabbos, where the point is to enable learning, to avoid bittul Torah, you say no. You're limited to a certain amount. You can't clear the entire area. So, despite the fact that there's bittul Torah involved, we limit you. Hacha de lek a bittul be some medrash like Koshkin. Certainly over here on Yom Tov, where you're just trying to save salvage your Paris, there's no question of bittul Torah. Certainly. We don't allow you to do too much. That's one shayla. Clear the entire area. Is a motor asr. We figured perhaps we'll compare it to Shabbos. We're not sure if the comparison holds water. Next, v'achatnan. Over here on Yom Tov we learn, ma'ashilin peres de'ech aruba bi You can drop the peres through this opening in the roof on Yom Tov. V'omar Rav Nachman. Rav Nachman explains, l'yishonu ala ba'isei agag. This only applies within that roof. It involves taking it to a, a next door roof. That's too much of a tircha. We don't allow you. So if the aruba is found next door, you can't do this. You find likewise in the price. 
You cannot transport the Paris in anticipation of the oncoming rainstorm if it's migag legag, too much of a tircha. Afilu kishegag oisein shavin, even though both rooftops are on the same level. So it doesn't involve climbing up or down. You're limited to that roof and that's it. So that's regarding Yamta. The question is Hasamai regarding Shabbos. Does this halach apply as well? Suppose he's expecting guests, expecting Talmidim to come learn. We allow him to clear the area, but is it just to clear it out, or can he actually go and take the stuff to the next door, which is more of a of an a tircha? What do you think? Says the Gemara, perhaps ha the asum shem yamtav the kill. Maybe it's only a chumra on yamtav because yamtav seems lighter in people's minds. If we allow too much, it's going to lead to zilzul. People negate and degrade. Yom Tov, take it lightly. So we limit your activities. Perhaps Shabbos, which is very prominent in people's mind, and people will not come to be mezazel. Perhaps we allow more leeway there. We allow you to transport the tefuah to next door as well. Which is more is a more extensive delivery um, activity, so perhaps that's okay. Or Dilma, or maybe no. Certainly not. Ma hocha, the have said Paris. I'm just If on Yom Tov, where it entails loss of property, the Paris will get ruined when that rain arrives. Still, we say no. If you can lower it through that roof, okay. But otherwise, leave it alone. Awesome, the lack of said Paris, the Koshkin. Certainly over there on Shabbos, where it doesn't entail any hefsid. It's not going to be any monetary loss. Of course, we don't allow this leeway. We limit you to that area, and you can't deliver it next door. So, that was the next Shiloh regarding bringing it next door. And Yantav, you certainly can. The question is, do we apply that to Shabbos as well? Third question. Hachatanya. Here we learn, meaning... When it comes to salvaging the Paris from the rain, we learn, Although we allow you to drop it through the Aruba, it's because it's an easy, it's an easy job, you just throw it down. But if it means picking up the Paris, putting it through a window, and then lowering it down with a chevel, with a rope, that's too much of a tirch, that's too extensive of a job, we don't allow that on Yom Likewise, you can't travel down, you can't carry it down steps or ladders. So that's regarding Yom Tov. question is Hasamai. What about on Shabbos? When you're clearing the area in anticipation of Urchim, in anticipation of Limerat Torah, Yom Tov the Asr, the Lekabit of Besamedish, perhaps. This limitation applies only here on Yom Tov. It doesn't involve Bitol Torah. Aval Shabbos, the equal Bitol Besamedish, Shabbat as opposed to Shabbos, where it involves Bitol Torah, perhaps. We're more easygoing. Or perhaps you can say, If we find that here on Yom Tov, despite the fact that it involves loss of property, we say, no, you're limited. You can't do more than allowed. Certainly on Shabbos, there's no rain. There's no loss of property. Of course, this limitation applies. Take you, we leave it unresolved. So in summation, over here on Yom Tov we learn that you have to keep it within the roof. On Yantav we learn that you can only toss it down. If it's level, you can't lift it or carry it down. Does that apply to Shabbos as well? We're not sure. By Shabbos we learn you can't clear out the entire area because you might notice an uneven floor. Question is, does it apply to Yantav as well? Or maybe not? And we'll leave it unresolved. You can actually cover Paris sitting on your rooftop to protect from the oncoming rain. Amr Ulav Afilu Avira Delivni. You could even cover a stack of bricks prepared for construction. They're just loose bricks, uncemented, but they're stacked up evenly, neatly, in anticipation of Binyan. They're Mokza, you can cover them as well. Despite the fact that they're Mokza. Rabbi Yitzhak Amr, no. Peiros or Uyin. You can only cover Paris because they're royal achila, they're not muksa. But to cover a muksa item and protect it from the rain, that's asr. Rabbi Yitzchak follows his own opinion, stated elsewhere, 
Elo Adavar Anital B'Shabbos. One can only pick up a kli to aid and abet something else which is not muktzah. But if you're trying to protect a muktzah item, that muktzah status extends to this as well. You can't pick up something to help something which is muktzah. And in this case, if you're covering peris, okay, but if you're covering bricks which are muktzah, that's us. It says Rashi, 16 lines from the top. This was Ula speaking. You have some bricks stored for binyan. You have some rain dripping on them. It's afraid of damaging them, of dissolving them. You can bring kalim and cover these bricks. We don't say just because you can't carry them. You can't carry something to help them. We don't say that. Rabbi Yitzhak Omar, he says, yeah, Davka Peres or Uyin Latotl, who the Shara Rabban Latotl, Kalem Tzarchan. The Mishnah says you can cover Kalem, you cover Peres, because they're not Moktza. Aval Mide Labar Tiltal. But something which is Moktza, something which you can't carry on its own, Ein Kli Nita Latzarchi. Likewise, you can't carry something else to help to assist that item. You can only pick up a Kli, the Dabar Hanitel. He holds that the Mukta extends all the way to here as well. Says the Gemara. Tanan, take a look at the Mishnah, which says, You can cover a pre with a kli. Let's make a deep. Peris in, apparently only because it's Peris and not Mukta. Avira the living loy. But Levena, which are just lined up, Avira has just uh, some airspace between, it's loose. Uh, loose bricks, but intended for construction. Mokta items. Law, you can't be metatal something to protect them. Just as you can't handle mokta, you can't handle something for the sake of mokta. That's right, or bitzchak and akash on ula. Says it more, not necessarily. Who are then that feel of the living? Perhaps you can cover even bricks, which are mokta. The reason why the Mishnah spoke about Paris was on account of the first halach of the Mishnah, which mentioned Paris. So the mission just kept with fruit, kept with Paris. The I did the ton of Reisha, Mashil and Paris. And since the mission and the Reisha mentioned Paris, when he's picking up the Paris and tossing it down the Arupa, that only works by like Paris, which aren't Moktzah. So because of that, Tana say Fanami, Machas and Saperis, the mission continued the same scenario. You're covering the Paris to protect them from the rain. But technically, you can cover anything, even if it's Moktzah. Tanan, the mission continues further. You can cover barrels, pitchers of wine, pitchers of oil from the oncoming rain. Now, why did the Mishnah pick this example? Apparently because we're trying to stress. You can only cover a non muktzah item like barrels of wine and oil. Which is actually a muktzah. And that's exactly the Chiddush of the Mishnah. Not only can you cover Paris, which are not Moktza, go ahead and cover Kadiyayin Kadishem, which happen to be Tevel, which happen to be Moktza. Hachinam Mistavra. I'll even prove to you that the Mishnah had this in mind wine and oil, which are Tevel. If the Mishnah is speaking about wine and oil, which are not Tevel, why discuss it? Why add it to the Mishnah? What's the Chiddush? Hatanale Resha Paris. We already mentioned covering produce. Why give you another? Why give us another example of the same halacha? Peris cover, you can cover wine. What's the point? Oh, apparently there is a chiddush because it's tevel. And that was the point of the Mishnah. Not only can you cover peris, which are non muktzah item, cover even tevel, which is muktzah. Not necessarily, says the Gemara. I'll tell you why the Mishnah mentioned wine and oil, even though they're not tevel. There was an added chiddush. Perhaps I would think. We allow you to cover peris, which can mean fruit, which can mean grain, in anticipation of the oncoming rainstorm, which might ruin them and spoil them if they get wet. And that will result in a hefsed meruba, a large scale loss of property. Perhaps that's mutter, to go toil, exert effort to protect them. 
Put the half said more like Hoshu. But just to cover your barrels, which won't really get extensively damaged by some dripping rain. Perhaps that doesn't allow for coverage. Kamash Malon. Here's the Chiddush. Yes, you can do it. So perhaps both cases involve items which are non mukta There's a Chiddush in each one. So you have no Rai from the Mishnah to our discussion. Tanan continues the Mishnah. Noisten Kli Tachas Adelf B'Shabbos. You can bring a Kli to collect the drip coming from the ceiling. We're assuming the drip is not Roy Lachila. It's Mo'os. It's Mukta. And you're handling a Kli to collect it. It's a right to Ula. Who allows handling things even for the sake of something Mukta. B'Delaf HaRoy. The drip is Roy Lashtia. Perfectly drinkable, as she says, at least for the Behema. It's a non-muk to drip, and therefore you can handle something to collect it. Toshma, listen to this right. Person machtzelas al gabi levenim You can spread a mat over bricks on Shabbos. What do you mean? It's mukta. How can you handle something for the sake of mukta? Answers the Gemara: the yater mebinyana. These bricks were left over construction material. No longer designated for binyan, non mukta items. The chazu lemizgalayu, they're suitable for sitting and leaning on, in which case they're a kli, they're not mukta. That explains why you can handle something to protect them. Tashma, listen to this right. Person machtzelas agabe vana b'shabbos. You can spread a mat over rocks, stones, intended for construction to avoid ruining them, getting them wet. They're mukta material. Answers the Gemara by Vonim Mikruzolis. We're speaking about smooth cornered rocks, the Chazu and the Besakise, which are suitable for wiping the Besakise, and they're not mukt. Toshma, listen to this right. Person Machtzelas al Gabi Kaveris Dverim Beshabbos. One is allowed to take a Machtzelas, a mat, and spread it over a beehive. What for? Bechama, Nechama, in the sun, in the summer. Protect from the sun, ubig shamim, neak shamim, in the rain season to protect from rain, ubalvad, shloiz kavan lots of, as long as he's not going to trap those bees inside. So to protect them on Shabbos, yes, but trapping, no. Well, bees are mukta. How are you handling a machtzelis to protect bees? Hosanami dikadvash. We're speaking that there is honey inside the honey, inside the beehive. So you're protecting the honey, which isn't mukt. He has the kasha luravashi. That explains summertime, the ikadvash, where the beehive is saturated with honey. What about during winter time, where there's no honey? How does the bryce allow taking machtzelis and covering the beehive at that point, which is basically going to protect? The bees, which are mukta, there's no honey during winter time. There is, although naturally the bees don't produce honey during winter, but the um, the beehive attendant will leave two chalis, two honeycombs filled with honey, to provide ongoing sustenance for the bees during winter time. And when he covers the beehive during winter time, he's covering those two chalis, which aren't mukta. What do you mean, oisin shtei chalis mukta same? Certainly they're mukta, although they're edible, but why are they there? He placed them there to supply his bees with uh, wintertime sustenance. They're designated for that purpose, not meant for his consumption. They're mukta. So what you gain? He's still covering mukta. Hocha, my eskin, you know what we're speaking about? Shechi shivalein. He reserved them for personal use. And they're no longer mukta. Well, says the Gemara, if that's the case, my osers. You mean to say, if he had not reserved them, they're mukta, and you can't take a mat and cover the beehive, because everything in there is mukta. If that's the case, let's think. Adetoni. Well, if the Bryce is looking for a case where it's also to cover, where does the Bryce go? Bryce goes and finds another concern, concern of trapping, right? The Bryce says, ubavajli skaven lots. So if the Bryce is looking for a reason for Isser, why look for a new Isser? Bryce says, you can't cover if you're trying to trap. Lift like, but listen to the dumb. 
we could have simply differentiated within our case itself. Within Muktzah, we could have found a case where it's us. The Baisa could have said, look, typically cover. Cover the beehive. Because there's honey. Whether during summertime, there's an abundance of honey. During wintertime, you have those two honeycombs sitting there, which he reserved for personal use. That's only because he reserved them. And they're not Muktzah. He can cover a non-Muksa item on Shabbos. But otherwise, if he had not reserved them for personal use, they're meant for those bees that are Muksa, and you can't cover the bee because you're in fact you're helping, you're assisting, you're covering, you're protecting Muksa. Why didn't the Bryce cite this as an example of Issa rather than jump over to Seda? Actually, the Bryce was trying to Add a chiddush here. You can cover the beehive if you have honey during summertime or even during winter time. Those two chalis reserved for personal use. But even then, says the brayser, there is room for concern if you're not careful. The brayser means like this: Even in the case where he has two chalis reserved for personal use, non mukts it can be aser. It's only Muta provided that he's not going to trap those bees. So this Bryce is following Rabbi Yehuda, who holds that something unprepared is Mokta. The only reason you can cover the beehive is if there is honey reserved for personal use. But my Yehuda, to Rabbi Yehuda. So who's speaking in this Bryce? Whose opinion is reflected in this Bryce? We have Rabbi Yehuda who says something unprepared is Mokta. We have Rabbi Shimon who says Preparedness is not a necessary component. As long as it's edible, it's useful, it's not moksa. Who's speaking in this price? Huh? It's pretty clear, it's Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda, right? This name moksa. He applies moksa in this case, in a case where something's unprepared. And the only reason you can cover the beehive is because you have honey prepared for personal use. Okay, aim a safer, let's proceed. Well, actually, it's Kevin Lutz. Cover the beehive as long as you don't intend on trapping the bees. It seems like he's really trapping them, but as long as. That's not his plan, it's not his intention, it's mutter. And who's speaking there? Who she does that? That dover she'inim is kavan is mutter. When you do malacha with that intention, don't worry about it. Who's, who subscribes to that shita? Ason Rab Shimon. That's Rab Shimon speaking. The Amar dover she'inim is kavan mutter. A person does something which results in a, a secondary a, a result which is not part of the initial plan, that's mutter. Well, according to Rabbi Yehuda, it's not so. So according to Rabbi Yehuda, who seems to be the man the of this price, how can he go ahead and trap the bees despite his lack of intention? Dover, Shein, Miskavan, is also. One second, says the Gemara. You know what? Even according to Rabbi Shimon, it wouldn't really work. Vitisper, Rabbi Shimon, do you mean to say that according to Rabbi Shimon, it's going to work? Here, the result is inevitable. It's called psikresha. And even according to Rabbi Shimon, it would be also. They both tell us. Moi did Rabbi Shimon, the psikresha. Shimon agrees in a case where it's inevitable. The marshal is, <laughs> he removes the head of the chicken, expects it to live. I don't want it to die. Even if Shimon agrees, can't play games. He's trapping the bees. It's a malach of tzedah. Notwithstanding his lack of intention, doesn't matter. Despite the fact that he doesn't want it to happen. It's a psikresha. So the truth is, we're in trouble according to either sheet. Even according to Rabbi Shimon, this doesn't work. Answers the Gemara. Oh, so let's um, rework the situation, the, the, the scenario. Let's rework the case here. You know what? This price entirely is in accordance with Rabbi Yehuda. The first part of Bryce, it must make sure the honey was prepared for personal use to avoid Mokta. That's Rabbi Yehuda. What about the issue of trapping? You know what we're speaking about? The Ispeik Kavi. The beehive has some windows through which the bees can exit. So therefore, he's not even trapping at all. Now, being that the Bryce is Rabbi Yudha, you have to say like this. Don't say, That really, he's trapping the bees. The reason why he's not, not a concern is because he doesn't care about trapping it. That wouldn't help us according to Rabbi Yehuda. 
Ella rather Ema say as follows. Oh, the Brisa meant that he can cover, he can protect the beehive, provided he's careful not to turn into a trap. He has to leave some some leeway for those bees to get out. Okay? So the Bryce is Rabbi Yehuda. He can cover the beehive when there's honey, which is not moktzah, whether throughout the summer, where it's intended for personal use, whether throughout the winter, when those two chalas were reserved for Achilas Adam, in which case they're not moktzah, according to Rabbi Yehuda. What about the issue of trapping? Be careful not to trap them. Be careful to leave some space for them to leave. Pshita, of course. Otherwise it's trapping. What's the chiddush of the b'raisa? The chiddush is ma'ud attainment. Perhaps I would think there's no issue of trapping by bees. You know why? The concept of tzed, of trapping, the malacha, only applies to a type of creature, to a species which is generally trapped. So you've accomplished something by trapping it. It's a malacha. But bees? Who traps bees? Shaloid bemino initzayid muta. But say that wouldn't apply to something which is generally not a trapped item. Kamashmon, the chiddush is no. But even something which isn't bemino initzayid, something which, whose species isn't necessarily a, 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 a candidate for, for hunting, for trapping, such as bees. Udi mutter? No, the chiddush is even there it's us. Says Rashi on the top line. As opposed to a bee, I will hide the end of the minion. It's a shari. Come on, shmon. The chiddush is no. Say it applies even in this case. So, bottom line, the bride perhaps is Rabbi Huda. You know, you need to prepare those chalis for personal use in order to avoid mukta. And that's why you're allowed to cover the beehive. Right? We're going perhaps with the shita that you can only handle a kli for the sake of something non moktza Why is the beehive not moktza Because of the honey inside, which was prepared for personal use. What about trapping? Don't trap. Ravashi Amar, he says like this. The reason why you're covering the beehive is because it's not moktza Okay. So what was your question? Bees are moktza no, you have honey. Well, honey, during summertime. What about during wintertime? And the Brysa clearly allows even during wintertime. Says Ravashi. No, let's reinterpret those words. Since when did the Brysa say summertime and wintertime? I didn't say that. Bechama. Pnechama. All the Brisa said was, cover the beehive, Bachama, when it's in the sun, protected from the sun. Bachama, Pnechama. Ubegshamim, when it's raining, protected, Pnechshamim. That's all. That's what it said, Katani. It's not referring to winter time. It's referring to spring and fall, when you have some sunshine and some rain. And during spring and fall, there's an abundance of honey in the beehive. So you're okay with covering it. For instance, during Nisan time, springtime, Tishri time, fall time. So you can have both types of weathers. Some days it's sunny, some days it's raining. And certainly there's plenty of honey in there. It's not winter time. And therefore you can cover the beehive. So in conclusion, we had a machlek. It's regarding being matatal akli on Shabbos or Yantiv. According to Ula, Carry it for any sake, even for the sake of something which is moktzah, to cover something which is moktzah. Rabbi Yitzchak says, no, just like you can't handle moktzah, you can't handle something else to cover the moktzah, to assist the moktzah. It's considered an activity which is related to the moktzah and it's us. We have several rites which we thought were rites one way or the other. The Gemara disregarded those rites. The last one on the list was the halach of spreading the machzalas over the beehive. And the one concluded that was speaking that there is honey in there. So it's not moktza, and that's why he's covering the beehive. Whether it's during the winter time with the two chalais that were reserved for personal use, 
or throughout the rest of the year when there's plenty of honey in that beehive. Continues the Gemara. Go ahead and take a kli under the dripping roof. Tana. We're going to turn the Smali a kli. When that kli fills up, take it out, spill it out, and bring it back, refill it, without any hesitation. So it's not just a one time allowance. You can repeat the process over and over throughout the day as needed. We're not concerned about extra tirch. It's a tirch yom. Says Zygmar, we had a story regarding Beiri Chaya, the uh, millstone uh, equipment, the Abaye, that belonged to Abaye Dolov. It uh, was being dripped on. And this uh, Beiri Chaya equipment made of plaster was slowly getting dissolved and damaged. And this was on Yom Tif. Also, the Kamei, the Rabbi, he came to his Rebbe, Rabbi Amalei. So Rabbi tells him, let me give you advice. How to salvage your millstone. Zil Aile Lepurech Go bring your bed, take your your bed into that room with a millstone. In which case the damaged rechayim will look repulsive in your eyes. We'll have the same aloha as a graf, as a container, shall ray of human waste, which Chacham allow you to remove on account of mius. Now you're allowed to move around the rechayim, get it out of harm's way. You can employ this trick, so to speak, to save your damaged Reichayim. Now Abayah hesitated. So he's sitting and thinking and is asking, uh, questioning his Rebbe's opinion. Since when could you orchestrate a dover mois in your home to allow removal? If a person has a graf shalrei, you understand? It's mutter. But how could you be goyrim that something should become mos in order to enable removing it? Okay, so you're sitting and deliberating. As he was doing that, nafal Abaye's equipment disintegrated, fell apart, totally destroyed. Omar Sabaye remarked, tastily, I am deserving of this punishment. I transgressed the master. I didn't accept this halacha at face value. I was challenging it. And this is my Einish. Asks Toysvis. Indeed. What was the basis of Rabbi's heter? How can you make a graf sherei l'chatchila? We know from the Gemara. Uh, you're not meant to do l'chatchila. Something to uh, uh, bring about moving mukts. Toys gives two terutzim. Either there was hefzid. There was a uh, loss of property, and because of that, the Chachamim applied this kula. Or he says, it's not called the Chachila. It was already uh, midway, the, the damage was already happening. It wasn't like he was trying to uh, uh, orchestrate this. It was already uh, mid-experience. And therefore, it doesn't go into the halacha of Ein Oisin Grav Sharei Lechatchila. If you can avoid it, fine, but it's already happening. The thing was being damaged, and we can employ this, uh, employ, so to speak, to... Um, Protects from further damage. Continues the Gemara. Omar Shmuel. Grav Sharei, a container of waste. Va'avich Mimir Aglaim, a container containing liquid waste. Mutalot Sila Ashpa. One can empty them out at the Ashpa, Ukshimach Ziroi. But when you bring back the Kli empty, Noisin be Maimamach Ziroi. The only way is to fill it with a little water and bring it back on account of the water because keep in mind, the heter is only to remove on account of Kavit Abriyas. But once it's outside, you shouldn't bring it back. The hatter is because it has some water. On account of the water, we allow its return. Sabrimino, now the Bnei Yeshiva, the Gemara figured that this allowance of removing a graf sharei is only by way of the kli. Graf sharei agav monain. It's only because you carry the kli. So you're not directly contacting the waste. But to actually directly move the Mukta waste, that's also Tashma, but that's not so. We have a, a story, Dahu Achbarta. There was this mouse, this dead mouse, the Ishtakach Beis Par Mikidar of Ashi, which was found amongst the Bsamim or Ashi, on Shabbos or Yom Tov. Amulur of Ashi, Rashi turned to them, Nakto Betsutsisa, grab it by its tail, Afku, and take it out. Apparently, the heterograf Sharei applies to anything which is Mos, even if it necessitates direct contact. 
continues the Mishnah, Kol Shechayov and Olav, Mishim Shvost, Mishim will tell us that all the halachas, all the rabbinic restrictions, the Surah de Rabbanu, which are generally referred to as a Shvost, which apply on Shabbos, apply on Yom Tov, which apply on Yom Tov, apply on Shabbos, with no difference. We're going to have three categories. The basic one is called Shvos, involving a non-mitzvah related activity, which is also going to be It's called Shvos, plain Shvos. Shvos, by the way, is Meloshan Shvos, refrain, rest. Keep away from that, mice. The next category is Shvoshos, and the next one is Mitzvah. Mitzvah means a full-fledged Mitzvah activity, which is still also going to be because the Shvos applies there as well. Rishos means something somewhat related to Mitzvah, but isn't really a full-fledged Mitzvah, but it's still also going to for whatever reason. And we have the more basic level, which is Shvos, a non-mitzvah-related activity, fully mundane activity, which is Asim Drabban. Says Mishra Kol Shechayov and Allah Mishra Shvos. Any mass which a person is meant to refrain from, is Chayev to refrain from it, because it's a Shvos, it's a plain Isra Drabban, a non-mitzvah-related activity, or Mishim Rishos, something which is higher up the ladder, somewhat mitzvah-related, but still Asim Drabban, or Mishim Mitzvah, fully mitzvah-related, but it's still Asim Drabban. So all these things which a person is chayev to refrain from b'shabos, likewise chayav and all he should avoid on as well. The following considered shvus activities: don't climb a tree, don't ride an animal, don't swim, don't clap your hands, tap your thigh, no dancing. These are non mitzvah related activities, which are also mishmar shvus. The Gemara, of course, will explain the reason for all these Yisurim. Next category, Ve'elen Mishim Rishos. We have a list of activities which are closely related to Mitzvah, but still us. Lo'i Dona, don't conduct a court case. Lo'i Mekachin, don't be Mekadosh Yisha. Lo'i Chotzen, don't do Chalitza. To the wife of one's brother who died without children. Lo'i Miyab, nor Yiba, marry that Yisha. That cannot be done on Yom Tov Shabbos. The following considered mitzvahs, which are off limits on Shabbos or Yontif, like Makdishin. Don't give something away to Bedekah Bayis, the Besam Middash. Vulem Arichan, don't commit to give your value to Besam Middash. Vulem Achrim, it's another form of Hegdash. Vulem Achrimin. Vulem Akbi and Truma of Masa. Don't separate Truma of Masa. These are mitzvah related activities, but are also on Yontif or Shabbos. Call Elo Bi Yontif Amrum. Chacham applied these to to Yontif. Kabachayim and Shabbos, and certainly on Shabbos. Because ain by Yom Tov Shabbos, Ella Yichal Nefesh Belavad. The only difference between Yom Tov and Shabbos is that on Yom Tov we're allowed to do malachis, which are related to food food preparation, but otherwise Shabbos and Yom Tov are created equal. Says Rashi, around halfway down the Amud, Mas Nisan. Kol Shachayev Alav Medivrei Soif from Shleiyos Soif to B'Shabbos and B'Shmishvus. Any activity which the Chacham disallowed. On Shabbos, on account of Shvus, which means sheish b'gitzas mitzvah, I believe it's for gedolah. The korav who leaves davar rishus, we refer to it as rishus because it's gitzas mitzvah. It's closer to a non mitzvah than to a mitzvah. The sheish boy isur mitzvah reshayf, which can't be done in the rabban. Oi, mishum mitzvah. Oi, sheish boy mitzvah mamish. It's a real mitzvah, and still vasru chacham las b'shabbos. Chayav and olav. Should not be done on Yom Tov as well. Right? Shvus is lish boys. Give me an example of things which are non mitzvah activities that are awesome at the Rabban. Don't climb a tree. Kulum of fire spirit. Gemara, as the Gemara will explain, am I Gosbu Rabban? What's the reason for these issues? Don't clap. On your thigh. As an expression of simcha. The covered money he might be tempted to tune up his instruments to enhance the experience. So it's us. We have examples of things which are slightly related to mitzvah, and perhaps that would justify it being done on Yom Tov. Still, Chacham applied in Isra. Hi, the Karlo Rishus. Question is, why do we call them Rishus, which sounds like something mundane, a non-mitzvah activity, 
These things are somewhat mitzvahs. And says Rashi, it's all relative. Relative to a true mitzvah, they're called uh, rishos. Mishim Hanach, the boy missing the safe of a mitzvah gemura, on account of the next list in the Mishnah describing true mitzvahs, full fledged mitzvahs, or the gabi hen, relative to them. Kari lahanach mitzi, rishos. The Mishnah refers to the middle category as rishos. Ulanach kamai kari shvus. First category, totally non mitzvah activities, we call shvus. The isr shvus gomer yeshben. They're completely us. There's no reason to justify them being done on Shabbos. And the first list, there's no reason, there's absolutely no justification for suspending the Isra the Rabban because they're not even a mitzvah at all. No element of mitzvah whatsoever. So when we speak about Shavuz, totally mundane. Rishuz, somewhat mitzvah, and mitzvah, absolutely mitzvah. All three are awesome at Rabban. What's included in the list of Rishuz? Somewhat mitzvah related, but still also loy done. Din, you can't make a din tayr. But I'm a kachin isha. The Gemara refers to my kardah rishos. The Gemara will actually ask, "I'm a kaddish isha. Do we get din tayr? That's a true mitzvah. That's not just uh, related to mitzvah. So why is it rishos? So the Gemara will address that. V'loy makdishin hakdishes. Marichin means erkecha alai. I'm committing to give your value to Hashem or my value. Which is determined in the parsha of Erechim. It's a way of expression of donating to Hashem. Okay, now the Gemara will address the reasons for these Yisrael. What are the concerns here? Says the Gemara, a person should not climb a tree on Shabbos or Yontiv. She might rip off a branch as he's sitting on the tree. It's close, close at hand for concern. What's wrong with riding an animal? You might not realize it's going so quickly and it's end up out of the tchum. So don't mount an animal on Yom Shma Mino apparently says the Gemara, Tchum and Daraisa, this is Machlaikis. Whether the Isra of leaving the boundaries, Daraisa, the Rabbanon, the fact that we don't allow riding an animal because it might lead to leaving the tchum. In the case that the Isra of Tchumen is the Raisa, because otherwise, if leaving the Tchum is only the Rabban, we would never apply another Gzera on top of that, a double deck of Gzera. Is that so? Says Mar Adler, actually, let's uh, go away from this concern. That's not the reason for the Isra of riding an animal. El Gzera Shemayachter Chsmur. Concern is if he's riding his animal, he might be inclined to rip off a branch to lead his animal. So keep away from the animal. Don't swim. There's a concern that he might produce some sort of floating device, some sort of woven uh, floating device. Tesis learns that chavis means literally a barrel. So an empty barrel which we'll use as a flotation device. So that's the concern there. You can't Engage in these uh, expressions of simcha. Why? He might be inclined to fix his instrument to enable it for use. Now, actually, there is a thesis earlier who says that we're not concerned we're not so concerned about uh, this uh, type of uh, isr because we're not so bucky. We're not so proficient, we're not such uh, expert, expert tuners, and there's no gzera uh, that it might lead to fixing a klishir. Actually, in Shulchan Aruch, both opinions are brought down. The Ramah seeks to explain the Minaga Oilam, who dance, etc., because of this taisus. Well, there's um, various shitas, various menhagim, some adopt taisus uh, kula, and some don't. Continues the Gemara. Give me examples of activities which are somewhat mitzvah related but still aser. First one being, don't make a din Torah. Now, why is that Rishus? About mitzvah ka'avid. He's doing a mitzvah to do a din Torah. Apparently, we're speaking the Ikad of Minei. There is a Chacham greater than him, ranking higher than himself. So he has no mitzvah to do the din Torah. So technically it's not called a mitzvah, but it is somewhat mitzvah-related. 
And that's what we call it Rishus. Vloy Mekach, nor can he be Mekadash Isha. And it's called Rishus. What do you mean? Va Mitzvah Kavit. He's doing a mitzvah, marrying to produce children. It's a mitzvah. Why is it only Rishus? Like Tzricha apparently was speaking the Isla Isha Bon. Yeah, he already has a wife and children. So there's Rashi on top. The Isla Isha Bonim. How many children? Shnei Scharim Be Shamai. Oy Zachar Nekeva Be Sil. Right, there's Machlekes. Between Shammai, you say two Zacharim is considered fulfillment of mitzvah of Puruvu, going to be Silo, Zachar Nekeva, that's how we Paskin. So he already, he already has that, he's past that. Vesulay Mifkat Kuliyah, he doesn't have that great mitzvah any longer of Puruvu. But it's still somewhat mitzvah related. Why a mitzvah? Umiyog Tsas Mitzvah Ikad is somewhat of a mitzvah to have more. Kuda Amar Rebbeiker Zeraz Aracha, Ulu Erev Altan Achidecha, and that's what we call Rishus. It's loosely mitzvah related. Continues the Gemara. Loi cholzim lemi ab, nor can he do chalitz or yibum on yom tov. And again, we call it rishus. Why? A mitzvah kavod. He's doing a full fledged mitzvah. Why is it called rishus? Loi tsri chadikad gadol. Apparently, there's a brother older than him who mitzvah begadol yibum. And ideally, the older brother should do the yibum or chalitza. So although he's stepping forward and taking the initiative, but it's not the Mitzvah in its ideal form, and that's why the Mishnah relates to it as Rishus. Now, we have a long list of things. Din Torah, Kiddushin, Chalitza, and Yibam, which are Rishus and Asr. Why? What's wrong? The Kulam of Time of Mai, what's the concern about doing these things on Yom Tov? The concern is you might be inclined to record a document as a result of this proceeding, a Psak Din, a, um, a document. To document the uh, Kiddushin, Shtar Chalitza, and a Ksuba for the Yavama, which of course is also to do on Yomtev. That's why I keep away from these activities to avoid any Chashash Melacha. Alright, so what do we learn today? The Gemara sought to compare our Halacha, as stated in the Mishnah, regarding Mashilam Peres Derech Aruba Beyantav, tossing down the Peres through the skylight to protect from the oncoming rain. We compare that to a slightly related halacha in Masech Shabbos, who is clearing out the oitzer on account of the oncoming guests, or the bitul beis hamedrash to allow the talmidim to come learn. We find some similarities, and we do find some restrictions stated by one, not by the other. Gemara sought to explore whether we can compare one to the other, and we left it off with a teku. Now, according to Ula, one can cover anything on Shabbos or Yantah to protect from rain, despite the fact that it's Moktza, because you can be metatl, a non moktza item, to protect a moktza item. No concern there. According to Rabbi Yitzhak, you cannot do that. We had a Bryce discussing protecting a beehive. Well, the Gemara says, perhaps, we're speaking that it's not really moktza. There's some honey in there. Whether it's throughout the winter, and we have those two honeycombs which were reserved for personal use, and they're not moktza, or perhaps the Bryce is speaking throughout the year, spring, summer, fall, where you have plenty of honey. We learned about the aloha of graf sharei, so something which is moist, can be uh, cleared out, can be emptied out, and even if it involves direct contact, include with the Mishnah, that all the Isura de Rabban, which are called shvus, which apply on Shabbos, will apply on Yom Tov. The only difference is Malacha is for Echel Nefesh, which is Mutter on Yom Tov, not on Shabbos. And the Allah of Shvus would apply equally to mundane or Rishus, which is slightly mitzvah related, or even to some mitzvah activities to ensure avoidance of Malacha on Shabbos or Yom Tov. All the best to you and much, much Hatzlacha.